I love the Sega Game Gear. I love it so much I have three of them. Um, I got three of them that are all in relatively good cosmetic condition. They've all got the battery covers, even the little expansion port covers. Uh, and yet none of them work. Um, and this is pretty common with Game Gears today. Uh, most of them do not work. Uh, they're notorious for bad capacitors. Basically all the capacitors are bad. So the power supply section, the audio uh, section, and the main board itself. Uh, so you can have all kinds of issues as I do here. I've got these three different game gears. They all have three different issues. Um, this one turns on. It's got lines down the screen. I'm pretty sure that's bad capacitors. This one turns on. The screen flickers. Pretty sure that's bad capacitors. And the final one turns on and then just turns off right away. So, bad capacitors. Um, there's several variations of the Game Gear motherboard, um, as is typical with consoles, especially Sega. There's actually about four or five different revisions of the motherboard for the Game Gear. And um, I was curious as to which ones these are. So originally I was going to open up two of them <laughs> and check them out. Uh, but once I got them opened, um, I realized the these were two different models. Uh, there's sub uh, variations to the motherboards, but the main difference is going to be that it's uh, a single ASIC or a dual ASIC. Um, the dual ASIC ones are the like older ones, the original. You know, if it was a launch system or like the first year of production, uh, and then you know. As they learned to make these things cheaper and more uh, efficiently, they moved, like the two main processors, they were able to combine into one chip. And so that's the single ASIC. And so once I got these opened, I realized out of these two, one was a dual ASIC and the other one was a single ASIC. So at that point, I'm like, I'm going to open up the third one. <laughs> so I ended up opening all three. Uh, the third one was a, uh, a single ASIC. So I've actually got two uh, single ASIC uh, versions here, and they're actually the exact same. Um, they're actually the exact same motherboard. Um, so that's pretty good. If I wanted to uh, fix up two of these at the same time, I would be able to uh, order the same capacitors and just order two of everything, uh, because some of the capacitors are slightly different uh, between the different motherboard variations. So you need to check what motherboard variation you have before you order the capacitors. Um, so now that I've decided which one I'm going to fix, uh, it's basically one of the single ASIC ones uh, that is in the best condition. Um, the, the buttons are the most uh, springy and, uh, you know, has the, the least amount of scratches on the uh, screen protector. Still has a fair bit of scratches, but we'll get to that at the end. Um, so I've, I've decided this is the one to fix. Um, but again, I have two of them that are the same uh, revision on the motherboard, so... If I order the capacitors and it doesn't fix this one, at least it's the same capacitors. Originally, I was going to order two, uh, cap two sets of capacitors, uh, but at the last minute, I decided um, not going to do that. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of time. It's time consuming to do this uh, repair. It's 20 capacitors in total that you end up changing. Uh, so I decided uh, just to do one of them for now. Um, basically inside the Game Gear in the, um, in the back half is where your battery compartment is, or your battery compartments are. Uh, you got the power supply board and the audio board. The two little uh, sub boards that uh, are on harnesses that connect to the main board. And then on the front half of the shell uh, is actually the motherboard itself, the main motherboard. And this is going to have your cartridge slot and uh, the screen and the buttons and all that. So um, there's uh, six screws holding the motherboard in. They're all the same screws. Um, there's four screws holding in a reflector for the backlight. And, and there's two larger screws holding in the cartridge slot so that, you know, when you insert and uh, take cartridges out, you know, the cartridge slot needs to have like a sturdier connection to the case. Um, this is very common in video game machines is the, uh, the cartridge slot screws are usually bigger. <laughs> um, so you got, yeah, these two really large screws holding the cartridge slot in. 
uh, and then four holding the, the reflector in, and six holding the motherboard in. All six screws for the motherboard are the ones you need to take out, and the two large ones for the cartridge slot. Um, all six for the motherboard, though, are the same screw. So you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. It's actually pretty easy. Most of the screws in the Game Gear are the same size, unless it's really obvious. Um, now here's where I realized I made a mistake. So the screen right now is loose and it's kind of flopping around. It's hanging off by its ribbon cable. Um, and what I realized here is the four screws holding the um, reflector in uh, hold the screen bezel to the motherboard and they actually don't screw through into the case. So you actually don't have to take the four screws out holding the screen reflector in. Just leave those ones in and it'll make it easier uh, when you're handling the motherboard, the screen's all attached. Um, it's actually a lot easier than working on like a DMG, for example. While I have the game gears apart, actually all three of them, I'm going to clean the battery uh, terminals. Um, they're all corroded, all three of them. <laughs> um, this is something I probably should have done a long time ago. Um, most of the pairs uh, come out. Uh, they pop out of the case. So the power goes through all six batteries and comes back through in right into the power supply board. So the power supply board itself has two of the battery contacts on it. Um, so the ones I could take out, I cleaned uh, in vinegar in a jar. And then the ones that were permanently attached in the system, I just I cleaned with a Q-tip uh, in vinegar. Basically got them looking like new with just vinegar. So that was actually pretty easy to do. Uh, so here's the capacitors that I ordered. Um, like I said, there's 20 capacitors in total. Um, all, all 20 capacitors came to about $15 US or about $20 Canadian. And I bought them in a retail store. You can probably get them cheaper if you look around online and wait for shipping. But for me, it was convenient to go to a store and just get them the day I needed them. Um, I got my instructions for doing this repair off of... Uh, I fix it, and they've got a list of the capacitors you need based on what revision of the motherboard you have. I bought all the capacitors from the store, and I got them sorted. Um, so we've got three bags. The large bag has, uh, I think it's 13 capacitors, are the 13 for the motherboard. Uh, there's three for the power supply board, uh, and there's five for the, um, the audio board. So I've just got them separated and organized. Uh, so it's a little easier not getting them mixed up. This is the audio board here. Uh, like I said, there's five capacitors on the audio board. Um, one of the issues with this Game Gear, even before it... Um, its main issue was it would turn on and turn off uh, almost right away. But before it was doing that, it even had low audio. I think most of my Game Gears uh, have had really low audio, which again is common with the bad capacitors. So basically it was very quiet, even when the volume was all the way up. Um, so yeah, we've got five capacitors on the audio board. Now the ones that were on there were aluminum and they were really short. They stuck up and they're flush mount or like, um, surface mount and I'm using electrolytics. They're a lot taller. You can't stand them up. So you kind of got to find spots where you can lay them down around the other components on this little board and still keep everything flat and flush. And basically the same with the power supply board. There's only three... Uh, capacitors on the power supply board. One of them was short enough it could still stick upright, uh, but the other two were taller than the original ones on there, and so I had to lay them down flat. Um, so yeah, now I'm just working on the motherboard section. <laughs> I didn't get a lot of footage of me actually doing the repair. Um, it's, again, very time-consuming. It took me about three hours. Um, the um, capacitors on the motherboard are these very strange square packages. They actually have a cylinder inside, um, but they're in a plastic square package for some reason, and they're glued down to the motherboard. So you've got to take a pair of needle nose pliers, pry them up off the motherboard, and then you can um, basically pry it up and reveal the two um, uh, pads on the motherboard uh, where the legs are soldered onto. They're fairly easy to actually uh, unsolder, and so it's just weird that they're glued down, basically. <laughs> and then there's one of them replaced with an electrolytic. Again, you've got to lay it down flat, 
and you've got to find uh, room for it. I'm trying to keep in mind where the battery compartments are uh, and roughly how much room I'm going to have when I put it back together as to where these capacitors are going to be. Um, so there's most of the capacitors that came off of it. Again, there's 20 in total. Uh, I threw some of them in the garbage, and then I thought, oh, I should save them. So it's, you know, for the picture to see all the ones that came out of it. I'm bench testing this thing off of a power supply. So I've got the clips on the like alligator clips off a 9-volt bench power supply going directly into the power supply board. Um, and I was testing um, periodically. I would change a few caps and turn it on. Even though it would still just turn on and then turn off right away, at least it was still turning on, and I know I didn't make anything worse. <laughs> if I changed a few capacitors and then it didn't turn, at all, turn on at all, then I made it worse, and I know that I screwed up one of those uh, capacitors. So... I would do a few capacitors, test it, do a few capacitors, test it. So it was actually really easy having this bench power supply just jacked right into the um, power supply board. And here it is tested for the first time, but after all the capacitors were changed, um, it works flawlessly. You can see I don't have the buttons in there, I don't have the back half on. Again, this is just testing it. Um, so putting it back together, uh, again, I was fairly conscious of the height of these capacitors and how they had to be flattened. Um, I was a little concerned here with the uh, audio board. Um, it looks like it's going to be a tight fit, um, but it will actually fit. It's going to just squeeze under that uh, metal shield. You could probably leave the metal shield out, but I put it back in. Um, and then actually the two halves coming together, I didn't realize that there's... Um, posts on the case they're not screw posts they're just there for support and they support the back side of the motherboard where the buttons are so when you press down the buttons the motherboard doesn't flex it's just for to make the the button feel a little bit more rigid uh, and some of my capacitors were in the way there so i did have to bend them out of the way um, but yeah eventually got it all back together threw six double a's in there got rechargeable anti loops uh, and they do work fine by the way Wish I had those back in the day. <laughs> um, actually, I had a screw-on battery back thing for my Game Gear back in the mid-90s when I had a Game Gear. And so there's um, Streets of Rage 2 in celebration of this thing uh, working. Uh, I picked up Streets of Rage 2 uh, actually just recently. <laughs> so we'll get to play that now. And then one final thing. Um, this is something that I picked up from... Uh, owning watches and getting scratches on on watches is I thought I would try polishing the um, plastic screen cover with toothpaste actually um, it works good on I've used it on Casio watches with plastic crystals and I've even used it on uh, a Vostok with a domed uh, mineral crystal so actually a glass uh, crystal and it actually worked on both so toothpaste works really good for getting out scratches and screens and such um, and it actually worked out pretty good on here, as you can see. It's not perfect, but it got rid of most of the bigger scratches. So anyways, I'm super pleased with the way this thing turned out. Um, it absolutely pushed my limits of my soldering skills, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it. Um, so I was pretty amazed when it worked. And, you know, even if I changed all the capacitors, there was still a chance it didn't work. You've got the high voltage, um, wind, there's like, there's a high voltage transformer and that's, um, you know, controlled by some transistors that are firing pulses into that to run the high voltage, uh, cold cathode tube. That's the backlight. And even those tubes do wear out. So, you know, there's a chance you could replace all the capacitors in here and it still doesn't work. So, I was actually very happy when it all worked, and um, yeah, it's been working great so far. I've been playing some Streets of Rage 2 on it today, and um, actually, that's a, a great game. We'll take a look at that next.